So we're here in Helsinki and today Frank Kilcommons um, announced the new workflow specification with a new name. So um, I'm really excited to talk about it, Frank. So how did it go? Yeah, it went great. Uh, so the new name is the Arazzo specification, uh, which is the Italian for tapestry. So we got lots of nice interest in why we chose that name. But a generally really warm reception, lots of interest. Um, people could really identify with, with the problem space and the use cases that we are anticipating to solve with the new specification. So yeah, for, for, for a launch in front of a, a technical and non-technical community, I think it went really, really well. Yeah, and we have a little clip of Frank doing it, so here it is. Problem. So we're all producing lots of APIs, that's great, you know, that's the fundamental uh, ingredient to make our digital capabilities come to life, but we don't have a way of describing how to consume them in a, in a meaningful manner. So most often when you're consuming an API, you need to do more than just one thing. You know, you need to do a sequence of calls in order to achieve your job to be done. And that is where the Arazo specification really comes in. So what is it all about? Uh, well, it describes an approach to document use case oriented workflows in a programmatical readable format. And when I refer to a workflow in this case, it's nothing more than a series of API calls which woven together help you accomplish a certain uh, business objective or outcome. Now, the traditional readable attributes of the formats here, so we're talking about JSON or YAML, mean that they're sufficiently human readable for all of us that love YAML, um, but more importantly, they're machine readable. So they allow a rich ecosystem of tooling to be built up to help us elevate uh, our processes for producing APIs, but more, probably even more importantly, improving the consumer experience. So what we're okay, and now we want to talk a little bit about like what Arazo actually does and why you're maybe interested in it. So why would I be interested in actually using that new specification? Well, Arazo is all about providing deterministic uh, workflows uh, across multiple APIs. So allowing you to make sense of unwieldy, large uh, reference documentation, maybe where you will have business flows that span across multiple APIs. Uh, the use cases are vast, really. So it's like solving documentation challenges, improving the consumer experience, allowing providers to have better assertability. So if you change one API, can you still validate that the overall workflow that you're offering or promising to your consumers is still um, still going to work you know because that that's ultimately what's critically important there's a lot of AI interest as well so as AI is becoming a new kind of uh, classification of API consumer that's come into the market quite recently uh, if we want to hand off the responsibility to AI to consume a complex or critical uh, workflow like you know moving money from your account to my account for example we want to make sure that that works first time right and every time right and without something deterministic like Arazo there is no meaningful specification out there dealing with being able to do this across modern API stacks so lots of interest from that perspective as well yeah and I think I can definitely just mirror that like a lot of people are thinking about Arazo in many different ways Everybody has something in mind, sometimes different things, but I think a lot of people just say, oh, I want to do this or this or this. And one of the things that you showed also, which I found really interesting, was the question of how do I author this? Should I have to write YAML? And no, you don't have to. So you had this really nice little demo where you were taking a, um, like a use case, yeah. I would say, right? And then just drop that into chat GPT. And, and we have a little video showing how that works, going from the use case and then going through chat GPT and coming up with kind of a proto Arazo specification, so to speak, something that still needs to be fixed. So a very quick little video. I just created a little to kind of set your imagination alight, uh, a little GPT that understands the Arazo specification and is going to help me actually create automatic developer portal documentation. So I'm just testing it a little bit initially on its knowledge of the Arazo specification. So just describe three main benefits for me. So as you would expect, it's good at generating text. So it will uh, spit out three relatively accurate benefits on the, on the specification. Then I give it the task of creating this um, adoption workflow. So give it access to the two APIs, the steps, and it does an 80% good job at generating the Arazo document for me. Of course, I've trained it uh, on, on what to do. Uh, once I fix that up, I then ask it to generate developer portal documentation in Markdown format, following its uh, output template. 
and to also generate some syntax for um, Mermaid and PlantUML diagrams for me that I can put onto my developer portal. So I'm able to then grab this information and I'm able to set it up in a developer portal of choice. So in this particular example, we can see that we have the pets API, so the normal open API uh, reference documentation, the adoptions one, but I've been able to automatically create the actual workflow. So a very nice little table that explains all of the steps, the operations, the parameters, what makes it successful, what do I need to look at in the output, automatically generate some useful flow diagrams, but also interestingly generate actual client sample code specifically for that use case, not just regurg regurgitating client code based on all of the operations that are in the API, but something that specifically does that particular use case for me. So that's really interesting to see how you can create like a first version of Arazo, and I hope that we will see actually quite a bit of tooling showing up. Of course, right now there is not much, I, I guess that's fair to say, but how do you see the space evolving and where do you want people to go to check out the spec and learn more and start using it? Well, the encouraging thing is lots of vendors are really interested in it, so they see immediate use cases that they can start building on top of, and, and that's really what we want. You know, Bringing a new specification to the community is brilliant, of course, but the specification really has value when tooling supports it, so that's really what we're, what we're looking forward to. Fortunately, vendors are already working on it. Um, what I would, do, would like to do is encourage the community to really get engaged with this new specification right from the outset, and here are some useful resources uh, telling you how you can get involved uh, you can uh, contribute your uh, potential use cases as well through the GitHub issues or discussions, and that will just help us improve and improve uh, over time. Okay, thanks a lot, and thanks everybody for watching. Um, we'll link those resources from the description, and with that, we're done. Bye from Helsinki, and see you soon. Bye bye. bye, -bye.